Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. So, um, funny thing when you use new technology and don't really fully test it out, stupid things happen. So, um, this review and the next two reviews are actually repeats of reviews, or I've already reviewed these wines uh, actually a couple days ago. So, um, so yeah, I get to redo... <laughs> We get to redo some reviews. So what does that mean? The reviews will probably be actually shorter than they would have than the original ones were. You also might hear. I don't know if the microphone is going to pick up the background noise of the uh, dishwasher going, but I got to get these reviews recorded. So uh, first, a little housekeeping. Um, it's been quite a while since I've done some reviews. I'm all backlogged on samples. So to all of you that have been um, supplying me with some samples, I've got five episodes to do. So five different samples or groups of samples to do and uh, I apologize for the long delay just various things um, things beyond my control things under my control so I apologize for the length of time in getting these reviews done from the time you've sent the samples um, I guess I probably should put an actual sample policy on my website um, that samples will be done as fast as I can do based upon my schedule a um, couple other things uh, let's see, I've got the advanced course coming up here in about, well, when you watch this episode, it'll be next week. Um, so in a couple weeks, I'll be up in Dallas doing the advanced course, so I'm stoked about that, and um, that'll be really cool. Um, so I'll be up there just for that Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, come back Wednesday. Um, not going to really have any time to do anything with anybody necessarily, but you know, the Saturday night I might be free. The Tuesday night I probably will be free because uh, we'll see. Kind of depends on who sticks around and what we do, who, who's who's around, psalm wise. Um, I just actually uh, today's Saturday the twelfth. Well, sorry, Saturday the eleventh of June. Really, it's Sunday the twelfth at like one o'clock in the morning. But um, so I signed up to do the deductive tasting course at TechSOM uh, that Saturday in August, the Saturday before the actual conference starts. I'm stoked about that. Um, it's a day-long event. I already got my uh, workbook. They give you a digital copy of the workbook, so I'll be perusing that uh, this week. Um, be volunteering at TechSOM for that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Of course, Saturday I'm doing the um, deductive tasting workshop. Um, and I am waiting on Texom to open up the uh, registration for the competition. Unless I'm missing something, they haven't opened it up yet. So uh, I just don't know how long they're going to wait to do that. Uh, when I did this two years ago, and I was really bad at it. Um, I was pretty sure by now the the um, registration had been sent, uh, had been available to do that. Um, but I do remember like being anxious as to how long, you know, knowing whether or not you were in the competition or not. So I don't know what the delay is. Uh, Texom is sold out, by the way, as far as the actual regular um, uh, conference. So that was that's pretty amazing. I took like I don't know a week or two weeks to completely sell out. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of my fellow Psalm uh, and other wine industry um, peeps. Uh, for that weekend, it's always a great time to see everybody. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I'm waiting for the competition. Um, I've honestly been back and forth on whether I was going to do the competition or not. But as uh, somebody in my Psalm group pointed out, I, it's not going to hurt you to do it. Um, it. You know what you did last time. This is just another 
another way to evaluate where you're at. And so really, I have to hunker down really bad because uh, Craig, I'm sorry, man, I've been really behind on my syllabus. But I will get caught up, at least uh, caught up to the point where when I do the competition, I feel that I am going to do, uh, do well and uh, at least way better than I did last time. Um, so uh, my plan is to take the exam around this time next year. So I do have a full year to really get the, the studying done. But I'd like to have the majority of study or at least, you know, review of uh, these areas by the time of the competition. So I've got a short period of time to do that. And then um, something I've been thinking about doing uh, is... Part of the reason I'm behind on, on the studying is I get distracted with a lot of stuff. Now, some of the stuff has been just some life things have happened. Nothing bad, just, you know, uh, just things have been going on in the uh, non-professional and non-wine world that's taking me away from doing some studying. Some of it's just been just outright just, huh. um, and then, uh, 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 and then just, you know, distractions of the internet. So my plan now is to, uh, pretty sure I'm going to eliminate all social media, uh, apps from my phone. Um, just go ahead and just delete them off the phone. Don't hide them somewhere. Don't promise I'm not going to load them up, delete them from the phone. That way it's, it, it's a, it's an effort to log in on the phone. Uh, and then just with, without that, not log in on, uh, the uh, computer and do that for at least between now and TechSom. Um, so uh, for all of you that I wish happy birthdays to, and that's really what I like, I do like to log in every day. And that's what I told myself I would do. I'd log in every morning, do the happy birthdays, and then log out. Well, I don't seem to do that. I seem to waste an hour or two between my two accounts uh, and then, then going down rabbit holes. So that's, that's, that's really been taking a lot of my time, which it shouldn't. So eliminate it off the phone. I'm going to uh, do all the happy birthdays for the next, what, two months in one fell swoop. I'm going to wish all, all the people early happy birthdays so I get those done. And um, then just I'm not going to be logging into Facebook, uh, Twitter. Uh, I will be using Hootsuite to do my posts for, you know, hey, I got the new show up. So you will see posts on social media, but they're... Um, automated or scheduled posts is really what they are. Um, so I will be doing that throughout the next five episodes. And uh, so it's not going to be completely gone from social media. Uh, I don't plan on checking in on Swarm. I don't plan on using Instagram. So if you're wondering why you don't see anything over the next month, month and a half or so, that's why. Help keep the distractions to a minimum and really just work on uh, studying and just doing or doing stuff at the house that needs to be done. Um, I think that's enough of the housekeeping. Let's get into the wines. All right, so wine number one is a white wine. No, I'm sorry. Uh, so wine number one, uh, so these wines were donated to me, and these are um, from, let me get to the correct notes here. So uh, these are from two different um, two different countries. Um, they are were sent to me from the same person. The overall company is the same company between the two, and they are kosher wines, and both are kosher for Passover and all year round. Uh, Mavushal, Mavushal, I think so. Anyway, and I, I even before when I did the original review, I. Forgot to see what uh, what that meant for, but if you're Jewish, you know. If you're not Jewish, you probably aren't worried about knowing what that is. So, if you're Jewish, you, you know what I just said. Um, anyway, um, I'm not. I don't want to focus too much on, the, on that they're kosher wines, just so that they are. Just you know that they are kosher, um, and that we are going to uh, talk about the quality of the wines and whether they're good or not, and. Um, because kosher wines have had uh, a reputation of being really bad. Okay, um, so let's go over who these uh, wine or who these what these wines are, who made them, and all that. So the first one is the non-vintage Serabi Woo Sweet Moscato. Now this is from uh, the Puglia area of Italy, and um, which I did not mention last time, and. Uh, 
The Cerebi is the name of the wine. Uh, it's actually made by the Santero Winery. Uh, and uh, this is some of the stuff is like I had to dig deep on both these wines to do all those little investigations and, and be Mr. Sherlock Holmes. And I'm 90 to 99% certain of the information I'm giving you. Some of it I know for sure because I've gotten it from other sources. Uh, anyway, the Santero Winery, uh, it was founded in 1958 by Santo Stefano uh, in Belbo, Italy. Um, see, this is weird because this says it's from Puglia, but the um, information I had about the Santero Winery uh, says it's in the Piedmont region south of Asti, which makes more sense because it's Moscato, mm. but it's very possible that it's not from Muscat from uh, Asti. It just says product of Italy, but it has an IGT of Puglia. Puglia. Um, anyway, Wellner Wines is the parent company, and Shimshan Wellner is the owner or and or winemaker. He also founded the Golan Heights Winery in 1983 is, and is considered one of the best-known Jewish winemakers. Um, they make wine in seven different countries. Uh, they were founded in... this the, the Wellner Wine Company was founded in 1990. All their wines are kosher, and... Um, this is, uh, at the very least, a partnership between a specific, a specific winery to make kosher wines, um, or they may actually own the, the, the production facility of this. Um, and this wine sells for approximately 6 to $7 at Trader Joe's. It depends on the blog you look at. Um, and we are going to go through it. Now, I did open this on Wednesday. This is Saturday. Um, I did not... I did not vacuum in it. I just put the screw cap back on. You can see there's a little bit of wine gone. Um, it did not refrigerate it. So it is possible that the wine isn't going to taste the same as it did that uh, that day, but it's a sweet wine. So the sugar should help um, prevent some oxidation. It's not super sweet, but it's not like a dessert wine where you can get away with that for a while. Um, there's a little bit of frizzante to it, as you heard. I don't know if you heard it, but there's a little bit of gas escaping and a little bit of fizz in the in the bottle. So let's go right into it. So far, it smells okay. Um, it smells pretty much like it did the, the first time. Um, I remember talking about having a paraffin or almost waxy character to it. A um, bit of apricot. Some stone fruit, which is what apricot is. Um, this is something a little bit extra in it, and it might be just because it's been open for a couple days. Or it's not sealed. But it definitely it smells fine. It's not, it's not turned to vinegar or anything. The wine is holding up very well. Um, so got a slight bit of sweetness. Um, it feels like there's a little bit of, you know, it definitely has a sweetness to it. Um, it's got good acidity. So that's, that's good. Um, cause it's good acidity and, um, it's just tasty. Okay. It is still tasty. Did not refrigerate it, um, did not vacuum in it, so there was a little bit of oxygen in there. It tastes really good. Um, it almost has a bit of orange, um, orange flavor to it. Uh, peach, uh, apricot still, uh, good acid, maybe a little bit of minerality, but not a whole lot. Um, no wood to speak of. As far as I know, this is um, stainless steel. I don't think there's any wood on it. I don't taste anything that indicates wood. Um, but it was, it's a very tasty wine. I mean, it's five and a half percent alcohol. So this is definitely a wine that you could hang out on a hot summer day and chill it and absolutely enjoy it. You know, forget the kosher part. And that's why, I, you know, I'm evaluating the wine. So are they a good wine? Especially for six to seven dollars. Dude, you could buy a ton of this and drink it like every day or at least one bottle a week, you know, on your day off if you want to hang out by the pool or, well, maybe not with glass, but you know what I mean? 
Like you want to hang out somewhere that you can relax. You're on a patio somewhere, a porch or whatever. Um, really, really uh, refreshing wine. And I'm very pleased that it, um, it held up. All right, so let's move on to wine number two. Wine number two is the 2014 uh, Terreno Seleccionado red wine. Um, this is a 70% Cabernet Sauvignon, 30% Monastrell uh, from the Yecla region of uh, not France, Spain. And then uh, Tecla, again, is the winery. Uh, I could not really find any other like actual info of the winery. Um, just know, I'm just know that the Wellner Wines is the parent company. Um, there is also a winery named, uh, Bodegas Castaño that also makes kosher wines. It's possible they're the same as both of the labels, this label and the labels of that wine, because they showed the back labels of those wines on, on their website. Both say produced and bottled by R.E. Then it has a number 6315MU-ES. That's like an address. So leads me to believe the same production facility makes both wines. Um, this sells at Trader Joe's for around $6.99. I got that uh, from the Kosher Wine Musings blog. Uh, they are on the East Coast, so your prices may vary. And um, both of these wines are imported by a company called uh, Dacchino, uh Italian Importing Company Incorporated. Uh, this was on the back of the label. However, when you go to their website, neither wine is listed. Um, and I don't know if um, uh, Wellner owns that also or what. So let's get into this. Funny story, real quick. Somebody I know will and will remain nameless, and it wasn't me, uh, broke the needle of a Coravin. I need to say I was a little bit uh, for Clint. I'm assuming I used the word right about it, especially because there was a second Coravin available and the person didn't understand, did not know that at all. I mean, truly didn't know. So anyway, that's some great wines that are under vacuum in that I'm trying to push. So this one, wine number two is a red wine. No evidence of blah, 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 blah. All right. So let's take a little sniff here. Now, since this is Corvind, it doesn't matter. All right, so on the nose, uh, red fruits at first. I would say more raspberry cranberry than anything else. A bit of like candy coat type of aroma, if you want to call it that. Like hard candy. I'm sure there's a better way to describe that, but I have used that so many times that there's got to be something else about this. Probably a chemical name for it or whatever. Not really a whole lot of wood on this. Or that I can smell. I mean, now I think about this, there's a, not really that much potpourri, but there is like a cedar, you know, oak, like oak box or, you know, wood wood box aroma and like some spices like I wouldn't say nutmeg but maybe clove uh, possibly even something like a cinnamon type of uh, type of uh, aroma so that most likely comes from oak I'm sure it does see oak treatment it doesn't say I couldn't find anything that said it did that's like give it a whirl. Oh, I'm sorry, Gary. Didn't mean to use that. You know how hard it is for me not to use any, any Gary's, any of Gary's isms, like sniffy sniff and give it a whirl, all that kind of stuff. And I haven't watched. I mean, he doesn't produce any more episodes, but I haven't watched any of his episodes and. 
since he stopped doing it. And it's still so ingrained in my brain. So on the palate, um, tannins are, they're, they're, they're pretty big. I mean, they're, they're really, they're really drying out, uh, my gums. Um, the acid does feel pretty high. Um, I don't remember what the alcohol was. I don't remember the alcohol being very low on this thing. Um, when I checked it, it's a 15% alcohol. Um, so high acid, high alcohol is usually not happening. But my mouth's watering. It could also be from the tannins drying up my mouth. Um, but it's not as high acid as like, you know, a, a razor sharp Sauvignon Blanc. But uh, the alcohol is, you know, 15%. And you can, you can feel it. But there's a slight little grip to the wine, um, a little brambly, um, a little bit brambly, uh, same red fruits. I wouldn't maybe say there's a, that much cranberry, but definitely some raspberry. Um, maybe a little bit of wood. I mean, I would say this probably gets some wood treatment. I don't know exactly. Again, I don't know if it's how much is new wood, old wood, French or American. Um, I would say there's probably more French than American just based upon the flavors and the aromas, but I could be wrong. It's one of the things I'm excited about, the course and the uh, and then the, the whole the all day deductive tasting thing, because sometimes I think I get off track on what I think influences or what 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 uh, aromas and flavors and sight mean. I think I've I think I sometimes veer off what it really is as I either misunderstood something or I'm or I'm making my own assumptions. So this will help really solidify when I see here or not here when I see smell or taste something. It, it really is more of an indicator of, of one thing rather than maybe another. So do I like the wine? Yes. It's a $7 wine. It's easy drinking. I want to say easy drink, but it's, it's pleasant to drink. Um, it delivers, it delivers good, um, good, uh, uh, uh Flavors, uh, a good palate. Um, you know the, the the bouquet is or the the, the nose is, is okay. I mean this is not this is not a wine that you're gonna you're, you're gonna go wow man you could sell this for fifty bucks a bottle retail. You're not gonna say that. But is it a good wine for for the value you're getting? Yeah, um, it, it's not a horrible wine. Again, it's a good wine that just happens to be kosher, right? So yeah, if you're looking for something like this, you want something that's that uh, regardless of kosher or not, if you're looking for a nice seven dollar bottle of wine from Spain, that's not uh, a Rioja, okay? Um, it's uh, and it's more Cab than Monastrell, so uh, it you know it does use more of a French varietal than a Spanish varietal. Definitely check it out. I don't know if it's very available anywhere else other than Trader Joe's. So if you don't have a Trader Joe's near you, um, your SOL, but it's definitely something to look at. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode. wasn't really much shorter than the first time I recorded this. Um, I just want to thank everyone for, uh, for uh, showing up and watching. Um, be sure to leave comments below, either on YouTube or on the website. I'll have a link to all the information that I found uh, at, on the website uh, to check it out. Um, you can friend me up up above to uh, yeah friend me up, though, again, if you friend me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, in the next month and a half, you may be a while before I accept your invitation because I'm not going to see any notifications. Um, and uh, But still friend me up. And then hit the donate button, send me a few ducats, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time. Next time.